A few months ago, YouTube began their attack on all channels related to picking up women. The power of demonetization and absolute force shut down nearly all channels containing any content about picking up women. Not coincidentally, a BBC Scotland investigation into the secret seduction community was going to be released the next day. YouTube wanted to get ahead of the social criticism tsunami of their platform hosting content. I was actually the first guy who put up a video showing Day Game, which is the art of uh, you know meeting and attracting women during the daytime, that went viral back in 2011. And since that happened, a lot more people started like doing this and eventually coaching this, and it's just kind of a thing that's happening all over the world now. CD manipulative stuff that actually is not the intention of Day Game at all. Yeah, I watched that uh, BBC uh, Panorama documentary about seduction and pickup uh, featuring Addy A Game and Street Attraction. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, <clears throat> please watch it before watching this video, but just so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will have watched it, hence why you clicked on this video. Um, if you haven't seen it, go to the BBC iPlayer website, uh, type in Panorama and um, just watch it. It's like half an hour long um, and then watch this video. Um, but yeah, to sum up my thoughts, basically it is absolutely utter shit. The level of um, uh, reporting, completely biased, tabloid-esque levels of reporting. Um, it's just absolute shit. Really shocking coming from the BBC, who are <clears throat> who's supposed to be impartial reporters, supposed to be professional, they're an established inst institution. It is absolutely dog shit. Um, <clears throat> so, just to explain, they sent someone undercover um, on one of Street Attractions boot camps just to kind of expose them, expose all the wrongdoings that they did. Um, and then they did a little piece on a guy in Edinburgh, in uh, Scotland, I think Glasgow, called uh, Addy A Game. YouTube has deleted hundreds of videos for breaching their policies on nudity and sexual conduct, following an investigation for the BBC's Panorama programme. The videos were published by so-called pick-up artists who claim to teach what they call seduction techniques. This takes place in face-to-face -face training sessions and by uploading encounters to YouTube, which they say they've secretly recorded with women. Miles Bonner reports. What well, Ahmed is teaching is part of a growing global online business that the men involved call game. game. Hmm. Earlier this, this journalist, he went undercover as a student to a boot camp, to a seduction boot camp, if you will. Okay, he went undercover and he was recorded and he basically exposed this um, boot camp, this, this company. And, and actually, to be honest, they actually got the company, um, I think it was Street Attraction. They got their YouTube channel shut down. Okay, there was almost 100,000 uh, subscribers, if I remember correctly, it got shut down. And basically it's interesting because this video is being, this documentary is being spread, okay? It's getting viral. This popular dating channel got actually um, removed. I mean, there should be freedom of speech and stuff. Very popular person got his channel deleted um, on YouTube, a, a person who, who would teach guys how to uh, approach women during the day, right? Now, this person lives a lifestyle in which he approaches, you know, during the day, he teaches men how to approach women during the day. Just found the news that a guy called Addy A Game, that a lot of guys, I guess, that are in the sort of PUA or dating coaching community in London, you may well have heard about him. Uh, he's a Scottish guy, but we wanted to give our take on what's happened and what this means moving forward. I think, um, without getting too political, that the media has a way of sensationalising yeah, things. Yeah, agreed. Uh, the, the environment we tend to live in at the moment, it's not conducive to actually being a genuine guy and, and putting it on the line. We yeah. still maintain the fact that, and we always have done, that day game, for want of a better phrase, meeting women and talking to women in the day, is the most authentic and genuine way to meet the opposite sex and actually using things like tinder where you're potentially loading on fake profiles or getting hammered in a, in a club or getting a girl very drunk is not particularly authentic yes if you see an attractive woman don't be afraid to say hello just hello i wanted to meet you see her reaction and then base it off that bbc news new video new video because they actually re-uploaded it two times because the first time got a lot of dislikes similarly on the second time, but the second time it's titled My Expose of a Seduction Bootcamp, BBC News. 
Now, this video is actually shown to be quite controversial because, okay, to set a little bit of context, basically, BBC News sent in a spy uh, who wore a jacket with a spy camera and disguised as a student on a seduction boot camp ran by this company called Street Attraction. So Street Attraction was actually a pretty big company in the community. Their YouTube channel subscriber count was almost at 100k, I believe. I wasn't really tracking their subscriber count, but I believe it was almost near 100k. And yeah, uh, somewhere around the when, when the video was published, the channel disappeared. BBC Panorama documentary that was recently released about Day Game. Um, so there was a guy called Addy A Game who got uh, ended up getting arrested for his actions and I feel like the BBC unfortunately didn't betray it in uh, such a positive light. They kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater and they didn't really show the other side of the coin. Uh, this is it. This is the BBC. The police investigate predatory pickup artist video. The police have begun an investigation after shameful and unacceptable videos giving tips to men on how to pick up women were posted online. He just that first sentence there. He's giving tips to men on how to pick up women. What's shameful and unacceptable about that? <laughs> Glasgow based Adnan Ahmed, uh, given his real name there, known to his YouTube followers as Adia Game or A Game, features in the films which have been condemned as predatory. However, Mr Ahmed believes his videos are nothing more than a bunch of guys talking to a bunch of girls. The police said their inquiries were at a very early stage and they urged anyone with information relating to the footage to contact them by phoning 101. Um, so that's them saying to women, see if you're in this video and you want to accuse this guy of rape, just give us a call because we need to get our stats up, you know, otherwise the feminist mob, they're going to come after us, you know. The investigation comes the day after BBC's The Social published a report into the, the, the videos. What's this all about? Hate crime, gender hostility, stirring up hatred, prejudice and violence, misogyny? Well, I'll give you my take on this case. I'll show you the BBC video and talk over it. So this is about a so-called pickup artist. A bloke in Glasgow who basically approaches girls in the street, tries to chat them up with the intention of having sex with them. Uh, that day. Then he uploads his exploits to the internet. The desire for sex should be mutual. Well, that's maybe true in these cases. The girls are consenting. Girls who do actually seem to have sex with him. They should reflect on the influence their behavior has. So I'm sure some women are maybe irritated by him. But on the other hand, watching the videos, it seemed that quite a few women were quite happy to be flattered by him and to entertain conversation with him. So I've stumbled on this video by the BBC, sadly about these pickup artists that are uh, harassing people and it's such a detriment to society and women and this is obviously going to be bullshit propaganda rubbish promoted by soy boys like the guy you can see on the screen fucking hell but let's see let's give them a chance because obviously they know what it's saying because it's bbc all right let's watch this stupid video actually this bbc video really pissed me off you wouldn't have thought that i actually have a problem with this man and when I finish this video, I hope this will help not only men see how ridiculous the Big Black Cock channel is, but also point out to women why men are not needed in feminism. If there's a problem with women being oppressed, you need to let women do the job, and this video is exactly the reason why. So before I begin this video, I want to point out a few things that kind of scared the shit out of me. I see a picture of a Caucasian man with a beard and he's outlining himself with the blue and then he has a YouTube channel in the back and then this thing. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this guy and when you first click on the video and you see him talk, I swear I thought he was the poster guy. The video is about defending and saving women, right? So don't you think that in order to let women know about this, you might want to put a woman in the cover. That would have made a lot more sense than having you because as soon as I watch the video, I'm automatically assuming that you're the creep. But I mean, <laughs> those things did come into fruition. Let's just have a look at the guy. His name's Miles, he's a journalist. 
usually he looks worse than this, clearly. He's got an unironed shirt, his collar looks awful, he's got messy hair, he's got jagged yellow teeth, uh, I bet he has bad breath. Uh, he gives off a little bit of a vibe that he might be gay. You can't really change the big ears and the nerdy voice, but you could probably feature it, you could probably do something about that. Um, he's clearly weak-minded. Uh, there's no cut, cuts on his eyebrows, which means that he's, he's never been in, a, in any sort of a brawl. He's probably never played rugby before. Uh, I dare, dare say by the looks of him, he's always worked in an office. I bet, he's, uh, I bet he doesn't have any calluses on his hands. I've probably never even been to the gym. Um, and he's got some sort of a social anxiety. Doubt, I, 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 very, I doubt he's ever been hit in the face or... You know, he's not a real man, let's just put it that way. It's essentially one of the reporters exposing a seduction boot camp. So what he did was he mic'd himself up and took along like a hidden camera and went on one of these boot camps and essentially uh, posted up like a six minute video of his point of view. When I first watched this video, I was a little bit taken back and almost shocked at how negatively framed it was. But what was refreshing was actually going through the comment section and seeing all the support there was for the coaches in the movement. But unfortunately it was foreshadowed with a lot of hate towards Miles. And yes, it was warranted, right? But I want to have like the biggest impact we can right now, right? We can take a stand as a community and as a society to stop this hate towards men being men. They, they essentially just focused on the absolute negatives whatever negatives they could come up with uh, completely disregarding all the positive stuff that um, happens in the industry so for example the boosting of guys confidence their ability to become uh, to, to improve themselves in a social situations um, the knowledge of how to kind of interact with the opposite sex on a calibrated and um, effective level they've completely ignored all of that stuff and just kind of focused on these really negative little sound bites um, and, and using that to demonize the entire fucking industry it's it's so fucking ridiculous you know it's like it's like you know the sun for example <laughs> level of reporting so like as an example i could say something like oh look there's a pack of dogs who are about to attack me and there's 20 of them I need to kill all the dogs whereas if they had reported that statement coming from me they would have said I need to kill all the dogs and then they would have said oh Ed he likes to kill dogs oh tabloid let's make a documentary exposing Ed that that's the level of um, journalism these guys are, 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 are portraying in this um, documentary it's just like the most petty form of like slandering you can possibly do just taking little sign sound bites and taking them out of context so that you're portrayed negatively without the other additional information um, to put you know statements into context just finished watching bbc's new panorama documentary the seduction game which was probably the most uh, atrocious piece of cowardly journalism uh, i've seen in a long time this guy, Miles Bonner, interviewed 20 plus coaches from all different areas of the industry. He interviewed American guys, he interviewed English guys, loads of different coaches doing all kinds of different things in the industry. But the fact is, that was not a fair and even overview of the industry, or of the people that are trying to help the many men that are struggling to go out and meet women in real life. It was not a fair estimation of what's actually going on. Let's just critique the video. Let's have a look at the views. There's only, what, under 30,000 views. There's not many views on this video. There's not, not a high impact. It's not a very important video, clearly. Um, most thumbs downs. Uh, what is it, like 1,000 to 200 or something like that? I don't know what it is at the moment. It's mostly dislikes. People are hating it. It's low impact. Nobody really cares about this uh, expose from the male feminist. I have no association with Shri Attraction and which is the company he kind of went along with. I think what they do on a moral standpoint actually helps society and is good for men and women. Hard to kind of sum up the, the feeling. It was, I, I suppose, a mix of excitement and anxiety because you're just constantly on edge. But you know you're there to do 
a job. So, you know, that part of it does make you feel quite, you know, I suppose determined to, to, to get the things that you're, you're out, set out to do. So I think it's incredibly important to look at the words he uses here. So he said, determined to do the things I'll set out to do. So the way I see this is he obviously is very biased, it's one-sided, but I think he came into this already with the intention to expose, already with the intention to look at this from the most negatively framed as possible. And he's actually doing, um, he's guilty of what he's accusing the coaches of doing. He's being very manipulative and he's trying to just um, show this in a certain light. And I, I have mixed feelings about this because I don't think he's doing this intentionally per se. I, I think he, he really believes this because of maybe the way he was brought up and his social conditioning, the way he sees the world. Now, I don't know if he has resentment towards women or not, but the way he talks about it is he really puts them down. He kind of treats women as they're not able to make their own decisions or do their own thing. Right? Women should be empowered. They're, they're very strong, independent, right? They've, they've got their own say. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with them being able to meet guys on the streets. And to insinuate that is a little bit sexist, I feel. And so, you know, I feel sorry for, for Miles a little bit here because I think he's a product of maybe the way women, you know, he's interacted with them, you know, earlier on in his life or the way he's been brought up in society. But it's kind of sad. It, it really is. And because of that, you know, this video has become incredibly biased. I think they take issue with guys just approaching girls on the street in general, um, from, what I, from what I gather. Um, that's completely retarded uh, coming from them. Um, I mean, what, what, what do they want? Do they just want, they just don't want guys to speak to girls? Is, is that how it is? Or, or is it the street specifically that they take issue with? Are guys only supposed to speak to girls on Tinder? Is, is that the way the world is going now? We're only allowed to interact on a, on a shitty um, online platform, which is completely superficial and um, so like far removed from sort of real life in, you know, real life interaction. Um, is that the way, is that what they want? I mean, I don't really get, what, what does the guy want? What does the BBC want? <clears throat> do, do they want everyone just to not speak to each other? I mean, I, I don't really get it. But the fact that that documentary failed to notice the people that are genuinely out there ha trying to help guys, and more importantly, the guys themselves, the guys that are actually struggling and are looking for an outlet, they're looking for a way to improve their social skills. They haven't been taught it at school, they haven't been taught it by their parents, they don't have anyone else to look to, but guys that are, have been through that pain and have actually learnt it for themselves, how to go up and be a good communicator, how to have a conversation, how to have the confidence to go and talk to a woman you like. Those people's voices were not aired, those people were forgotten, the BBC is not speaking for the people that are actually trying to learn how to be a better person, how to be a stronger man, and how to function at a high level in society. And this is a problem that we're facing. There is no voice for people like this. So I think this documentary was a step in the wrong direction. I think the videos that the BBC's released on YouTube are clear evidence of that. BBC seduction boot camp thing documentary that was recently released, hit piece documentary on pickup artistry, and fuck these people. I sat there fuming. Where is the other side of the conversation? The makeup artist industry isn't, like I'm not saying it's like roses and it's like a meadow of flowers and it's all good and it's all a lie. No, we should be looking and investigating these things from a very va balanced point of view. Like, okay, so what's the solution? You know, you, you invested time in making this hour and a half documentary. What's the solution? to this whole epidemic this, where these men fall in these manosphere communities such as the dating advice niche what's the solution and i was like like seriously i hated it how the documentary creators stood up there on stage kind of just like derping around like er her derpy derp uh solution hmm i guess we didn't think about that i guess the solution would be it just it's wrong it just shouldn't be here and that made me furious because in my mind it's like no, no no this is why i say we must ask ourselves the questions why do these communities exist they exist because these men these men don't have proper platforms and representation of good male role models to then model themselves after and become amazing excellent men in society 
So here we are, feminists, whoever, BBC, whoever, taking all this time to just do the easy work. Do the easy work of pointing fingers at men and saying, no, 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 you are a bunch of bad boys. Dude, what's the solution to the epidemic of pickup artistry existing in this world? Oh, it's so scary. It's like, let's point, our, let's, let's point the fingers back at ourselves and ask, what could we do better for men? It's fucking disgusting and I'm totally fed up. That's the nature of media. It's like the next trigger, the next emotional trigger, the next emotional trigger. So be it. I'm so connected to these communities and if it weren't for them, I honestly think I'd be dead. I think I'd be dead. So thank you to Real Social Dynamics. Thank you to these different social coaches who helped empower me with the confidence to realize I am a worthy member of this world. I have things to share with this world and I should be encouraged to engage with people in this world, men, women, whoever. Let's go through the comments. The comments are very interesting in my opinion. Uh, perhaps Miles needs some coaching. Yes, I agree with this comment. Uh, yes, he does look like a male feminist, I just said that. It's one-sided, it's very dishonest, of course. Uh, he's a snake. Oh, Ashley, this is a very good one. Uh, he, has, uh, he has no clue, and he goes on a bit of a rant. That's a very good comment, Ashley, I agree with that one. Uh, the media hates men. Yes, I would agree that, agree with that, definitely, especially in Western countries. And uh, the final one is, the only action this guy is getting is with his right hand. Love that comment. Um, there's no impact. This video is not really doing anything. This expose isn't really exposing anyone. Um, if you go to like the comment section of the BBC News, uh little video that they did on, on, on if you go to YouTube on YouTube if you go to the BBC News YouTube channel uh, there's like a little short little video like six minutes long or something if you just read the comments on there they're so fucking hilarious and they're just calling out the BBC on their bullshit just have a read through that because um, you know they, they talk about how like how hypo hypocritical the BBC are you know you look at like the Jimmy Savile stuff how they covered him up for for ages like the actual employees within the BBC knew about it and they tried to cover it they actively tried to cover it up and now they're like saying oh you know it's just like and now, and now they take issue with just like talking to a bunch of girls on the street it's like fucking ridiculous um yeah i mean and, and the sad thing is it's like we actually have to fucking pay for this shit with taxpayers money we're actually paying for these fucking clowns to make the shitty reporting it's, it's just ridiculous obviously I look at this guy, I look at this journalist, and I'm thinking, this guy needs help. Okay, this guy needs help. He's very stuck in certain old beliefs. He's stuck in limiting beliefs that aren't going to actually benefit him. Okay? He's seek, he's trying to go about, he's very attached to his beliefs, and he's trying to find evidence to back up his beliefs. That's the way the brain works. Okay? We try and find evidence to back up our, our beliefs. If we believe, um, if we believe the, the sky is blue, we will look around and we will look for the evidence that the sky is blue. If we believe that the sky is grey, we'll start to look for evidence that supports that. Okay? Um, so it's all about... I'm trying to break this down from a very psychology-based okay, argument, from a social conditioning, from a social dynamics perspective. Okay? And ultimately, look, I think it's a very weak piece of journalism. Okay, I think uh, it's just one-sided. Um, I think the way they constructed this documentary is going after and trying to prove certain things without even caring about the other side, without even caring about do they help their students, are they changing students' lives. Um, they don't care, okay? Okay, there's guys out there that are drastically transforming uh, students' lives for the better drastically changing their lives, drastically helping them with confidence, confidence with women, okay? Helping them get dates, helping them get a girlfriend, helping them uh, change their love life, helping them get over their insecurities, helping them understand how to attract women, okay? Guys are really doing amazing things. And for everyone that feels like you've been helped, you've actually improved your communication with the help of a coach or a channel, or you feel like you want to have your voice heard on this topic and the BBC have obviously failed to do that. To show the other side of this, to show the people who were forgotten and the people whose 
whose voices weren't accounted for in that documentary and talk about your experiences learning uh, and, and show the other side that people aren't seeing um, in the media right now because it's not gonna it's not gonna go down the way that the BBC are trying to make it go down right now. A lot of points made by this reporter, I believe his name is Miles from BBC News. He made a lot of points and kind of represented the whole industry as well as the specific company that was in the documentary in quite a negative light. And I'm gonna give you my opinion on it, having been a dating coach and also having been heavily involved in the seduction, personal development and dating community for the last two to three years, to which I owe a lot to because it really helped me in a lot of different ways. To dial it back and really look at the whole thing, the whole community and the company without bias and really assess their intention. I believe this is where BBC News completely fucked up. They have completely, I mean, purposely misrepresented the whole thing in order to either make a controversial video or just to get more people to hate on these companies, these dating companies and dating coaches. And if you look at the comment section below, most people are actually hating on BBC News for presenting such a one-sided story response to this shitty video because I really was almost outraged by it by how they have completely misrepresented this whole amazing thing that some of these dating coaches are doing for guys for them to portray it in such a negative light they really missed the mark with that with that documentary Thank God. stay to do a job but I was still nervous about being found out or making mistakes <laughs> Like, straight off the bat, they make it such a big deal that seducing women's a bad thing and then recording the voices, covering their faces, so their faces are not even shown, but it's still a problem. And they're not getting forced also. So, come on. Come on. This, this, this is not important. This is not harassment. There's actual rapists outside. And then they worry about this. There's a lot with this documentary which was interesting. The way they did the music, the way they did the lighting, the way they tried to really make people feel a negative emotion while watching it um again there's all there's so much psychology going on that people aren't even aware of uh very gloomy music um lots of it is filmed in these uh dark rooms and things like that to make it seem very dodgy and very um not ethical type of things okay it's there's lots of psychology being played. There's a there's a game being played by BBC, and the journalists did a very bad piece of journalism. Journalism should be as close to the objective truth as possible. You take both sides, and then you come up with objective reasoning. In in Me Too, they started out going after white men because the movement was made initially, or it was made popular by white women initially to go after white men. But when white men started closing rank socially and in court, they had to back up, recalibrate, and find men who wouldn't put up as much of a fight as the white boys. And my belief is the same thing is going to happen with the white male PUA community like it is now and the black male PUA community. The white boys are going to mount a defense socially and legally and then they're going to back up and then they're going to say, okay, who else can we go after to get some results and claim victory to the public? Oh, I know. Let's go after these guys. Let's go after this Mr. Lucario guy. Let's go after this uh, Steve the Dean Williams guy. Let's go after this alpha male strategies guy. People like Addy A game. The Addy A game. I haven't really seen any of his stuff, so I'm not really um, able to really comment on him specifically. His intentions are not entirely honourable. Now we could debate how much worse he is than many guys chatting up girls uh, in a nightclub. See, there's one guy with 2k views, and they try and make a big deal with every other pickup artist. He might have more subscribers, he, if, as long as he's not forcing the women and he's, you know, blocking out their faces. There's no problem. What's the big deal? What do you want us men to do? Right, so this is Addy A-Game. 
leader of w, uh, DWLF. I've never heard of this guy, right? I don't, I don't know the guy. Um, and just to be clear, by the way, right? I'm trying to focus on his arrest in the so-called crime, right? Don't let your dislike for him make you think, oh, well, he deserves it. Just think logically, right? A Glasgow-based pickup artist. The question was, do we do game for more than just pussy? Pussy is just icing on the cock. Uh, the BBC took, a, took issue with him talking to women in the street. Uh, so they made a video about him and they, they basically sicked everybody onto the guy and then Rape Crisis Centre got involved for some reason. Now the police are involved and apparently he's been arrested. And the article did mention that, that they, they went after some pickup artists in the United States as far as taking down their videos. They even arrested one guy. They, they arrested one guy for uh, some bullshit charge related to abusing and doing something to a woman. It, it wasn't even anything related to sexual assault or rape or anything like that. It was it was just a bullshit charge. A police spokesman, uh, Scotland spokeswoman, obviously, because they're not going to give her the dangerous job, are they? Said, we are aware of the videos posted online, offering advice and guidance on how to pick up the opposite sex, uh, particularly young women, uh, adult women. This type of predatory behavior, they keep using that word, predatory behavior. Uh, is shameful and unacceptable. Uh, wait a minute. Picking up members of the opposite sex is shameful and unacceptable. According to a police spokeswoman, of course it is, and will undoubtedly cause significant fear and alarm. So a guy speaking to a woman in the street will cause fear and alarm in the city centre where it's fucking crowded? Are you mental? No one should be subjected to this. No woman should be subjected to a man speaking to them. Are you seeing the codes yet? Are you seeing the, the, the codes? That's just, this is just the start. It will soon be against the law for a man to speak to a woman without her consent. <laughs> and she'll have to give the consent beforehand, probably a couple of days in advance, so that there can be no spontaneity, ever. And then women will sit and complain with their cats. Where have all the good men gone? Well, you chased them away. You accused them of rape for speaking to you. That's why they don't speak to you anymore. This is Adi Agame. Two closes so far. Real name, Adnan Ahmed. He's selling what he says are the secrets to picking up women. The reason you're doing it is to get laid. Only the brave get laid. He leads a group of men based in Glasgow who call themselves pickup artists. I do not identify myself as a pickup artist. However, a lot of the guys that I teach come from the PUA, the Pickup Artist Community, so I cater my teachings to them. I try to get them to manifest this beyond just picking up women and as part of their lives, rather than just doing pickup. Game becomes a part of their life and all their interactions, not just with women. I got some day gaming coaching with Addy a few weeks ago and it was largely successful worked on all my sticking points helped me improve stuff that I was stuck with the guy's good, he knows what he's doing he really takes care into suiting it to your particular sticking points I would, de I would definitely say like just as an overall coach um, just in general, like you could take Addy and ask him to coach anything and uh, I get the impression that he could do a really good job at it because mm -hmm. he just has that ability to coach people and um, not just being good at pickup, which is, you know, being good at pickup is one thing and um, but actually being able to teach it to someone else who knows absolutely nothing um, is a completely different mm -hmm. ballgame and in fact he's able to do that as a very good skill mm -hmm. in and of itself. Feminine girls want to be approached. You really have to not game in boyfriend mode, game in lover mode. Basically, you're going out there to get laid. It's all about the mindset. But if you behave like a asexual friend zone beat a male, you will not be attractive. Their soft nature, they are plugged in to mainstream society viewpoint and their general shakiness is what puts women off. 
the guys these days in their 20s actually act more feminine than the women. So add it was a cushion exception. I think that's what just changes from having a negative attitude, from having a negative you know type of mindset to an absolute positive fucking state because you go back to that natural state like the state of fun, the state of communication that we're meant to have as human beings and share that connectivity with other people. Uh, for me personally the 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 best or oh, quote unquote the best game I've seen on YouTube or now or I've like had more information that I've related to them. That guy for me that guy is just the fact they can be so free and so open minded and like have all this abundance of knowledge with you know he takes his brand serious he takes himself serious but in a way that he can share with other people you know and that's really cool and that's the that's the level i would love to get to but do you know what i mean so I, I, i've been watching him so much and it's just opened my mind up to so many things it refers to books it refers to a lot of cool shit that you can you can look up and really get inspired from what i wanted to learn and that was being free and that was not caring and that was just doing what you wanted to do obviously within the law they teach techniques such as the so-called cold approach stopping women in the street to get as many phone numbers as possible dwlf game had a group of alleged dating and life coaches again i don't see anything wrong with this you know if, if people want advice on this kind of thing go for it i mean it's, nobody's been harmed here no crime has taken place here. A game regularly uploads his exploits to YouTube. Exploits. Following female targets. Well, he's, the whole point is he's, got, he's talking to them, right? So, I mean, I haven't actually watched his videos. This is the first time I've heard of this guy. Um, following female targets. Well, it's not, it's not like... That's not a bad thing, he's talking to women. Remember, by the way, that's another thing to remember. The onus is on the man to make the first move. Never forget that. Women don't ever have to take lessons about pick-up artistry and all that crap. They never have to do that because they don't have to make the first move. They can just sit there on their fat ass and let all the men queue up to make the move, you know. So, don't forget that. The onus is on men. I just bust a nut or two uh, in a, a random same day late. it was a lot of last minute resistance had to come through eventually he's I talking about a woman he says he just slept with who he met that same day adnan ahmed has posted more than 250 videos many boasting about his sexual conquests and he's, he does this as well this is what i mean about him not being very likable he says he, he busts a nut right and, and we we don't talk like that here but He's, he's doing that kind of American slang thing, you know, but whatever, each to their own. We wanted to ask Agen tough questions about this. These are some of his responses. So that's his response. Notice they didn't show you the question. <laughs> the client base wants evidence of results as there are a lot of con men in the community. I mean, getting, getting a number is kind of evidence that it works, right? You know? I don't feel game will ever go mainstream. It's not for the politically correct. By the way, he is dressed like a pimp there, but it might be a Halloween thing. Who flaunt their chat up skills during the day and night sessions of what they call game. Night game was excellent last night. Day game was solid yesterday. A game explains game is the art of attracting good quality women. I was going to make a joke, but I don't need to because I've already seen this, so the next line is the joke that I was going to make. However, he told BBC The Social, quality women are hard to find in Scotland. <laughs> that was my joke, you cunt. Guys that I coach regarding relationships, and that is a whole different game from picking up women. A lot of the attraction stuff is the same but it's a lot more subtle. I am, like I said, not a pick-up artist. I don't like to call what I do 
pick up. I like to call it game because it covers a lot more. I don't want to define myself in that way. Think about it. Even these fucking beta male shaman white knights have a game. They have a tactic. They want to be the nice guy in order to get laid. And this is why I don't define myself as a pickup artist. I am a dating coach. I deal with more than just picking up girls on the street, online, or during the night. It's deeper than that. Right, I had recently as a uh, day gaming coach from Ari, and uh, what I really noticed was um, what Ari coached me was like I had a lot of limiting beliefs about how to approach and how to escalate and how to build attraction and what was going on really for me and Addy helped me overcome these limiting beliefs and just from Addy being who he was was really like a breath of fresh air from who I was originally and um, it was interesting to see who, how Addy interacted and uh, I picked up a lot from what Addy was doing and the, the steps that he was taking and what I wasn't what I wasn't taking myself. So since implementing what Ari was coaching to what I was doing originally, um, there was a massive shift for me. Just got some coaching done here with A Game. It was just amazing, man. Um, I did things I never done before in game. Just everything was attention to detail. It was really good, man. I'm feeling much better. It's helped me become who I am today. It's freed my mind, and here I am today. My mind feels good. Um, what game does, right, it just helps me realize who I am. It just helps me see the world in a different way than I used to see it. Master your mind on meditation, man. I'm not, I can just, I just speak to everyone like it's nothing. What Ahmed is teaching is part of a growing global online business that the men involved call game. Earlier this year, I revealed on the BBC what he'd been up to. There was a huge response. Two days after my expose, he was arrested and charged with harassment. This is a total fabrication by the BBC reporter Miles Bonner, as Adnan Ahmed faced no charges of harassment at all. The only real harassment and sexism you'll see in this documentary is actually performed by the presenter and production team. You know, disregard this nonsense propaganda. It's complete and utter bullshit. And yeah, it's completely ridiculous. Like to, to take issue with just guys approaching girls in the public. If that if that is indeed what the BBC takes issue with, because they haven't explicitly stated that they take issue with that. It's just what what I've kind of gathered from watching do the documentary. But it seems like they have a bit of an agenda against it. But thinking about it logically it's just complete and utter bullshit and there's absolutely nothing wrong with going up to girls chatting them up and getting to know them a bit um it's just the, the most honest and pure way of meeting someone how can you possibly take an issue with that it's ridiculous things i personally know loads of other coaches that were interviewed who are not doing any of the things that were highlighted in that documentary who genuinely care about the men that are coming to them as clients the people that they're trying to help and I know for a fact that this guy was just trying to jump on the easiest thing he could to, to make money and make his name in, uh, in, in the journalism game. And, and that's the problem now is that you don't have to look for the truth. You don't have to have a balanced perspective of any particular view. It's just throw away disposable arts journalism where the first point you can make the quickest person to the scene to try and cause an outrage to sensationalize an issue is the one that makes it and unfortunately that's exactly what we've just seen mr ahmed told the bbc the allegations are false it's just a bunch of guys talking to a bunch of girls if the female declines to speaking the male has to respect that and leave he argued that the view of rape crisis was absurd mr ahmed insisted no one is at risk of rape or assault. I have women in my, my family that I love dearly and this is a terrible accusation for me and them. He added that he intended to fully cooperate with the police as I respect them, he says. Um, and so that's, that's when he was being investigated, but now he's been arrested. Man arrested over predatory online videos. Police have arrested the man in connection with the videos posted online teaching men how to pick up women. 37 year old man has been arrested following an inquiry into footage of men chatting up females in the street. Just, just that whole fucking sentence there. 
A man has been arrested following an inquiry into footage of men chatting up females in the street. We're, we're inching ever closer, and all these people that are calling him a predator and a creep, they're the ones that will push these laws through. We're inching ever closer to it being against the law for men to speak to women. That's where we're going with this. YouTube has deleted hundreds of videos for breaching their policies on nudity and sexual content following an investigation for BBC Scotland's Disclosure Programme. The videos were published by so-called pick-up artists who claim to teach men how to approach women in the street. This takes place in face-to-face -face training sessions and by uploading encounters to the internet. It comes after a Scottish man, Adnan Ahmed, was convicted last month. Um. Get him off the streets and in jail. Why? What what we, what we put him in jail for? Right, right, okay. Okay, Billy. Let's put him in jail. Right, okay, right. You're going to jail. What's the charge, Billy? What we put what we putting him in jail for? What did he do? Can you tell me what he did that was that was a crime? Can you point to me the crime? Because I didn't see it. Put him in jail. What the fuck do you mean put him in jail? Last month, Adnan Ahmed, or Adi A game, was found guilty. In September, the self-styled pickup artist Adnan Ahmed, who calls himself Adi A Game, was found guilty. He was part of a growing global online business of so-called pickup artists who use YouTube. A so-called pickup artist, Adnan Ahmed, who called himself Adi A Game, has been jailed for two years. Police Scotland confirmed on Thursday that it was looking into videos on YouTube featuring what the force described as predatory behaviour. It followed publication, I w we know that. On Friday, a police spokes Scotland spokeswoman, um, I was in that as well, the previous day, uh, the force said it was aware of the videos offering advice and guidance how to pick up the opposite sex, particularly young women. This type of predatory behaviour, yes, yes, we said, can you tell us what the charge is? We are investigating, but our inquiries at a very early stage. We would ask anyone confirming, right? No one has defended his videos, which he said were nothing more than a bunch of guys talking to a bunch of girls. Now, you see there in that article, is pretty much what the last one said. But at no point are they telling us what he was arrested for. Why has he been arrested? Why has why this man been arrested? What is his crime right now? The only thing I think they can get him on is the recording of the woman in bed. But if she was to say, no, I consented to that, I don't mind that, then it's, it's not a crime, right? But apart from that, why is he, why is he being arrested? What, what is his crime? Adnan Ahmed's covert recordings didn't form part of the criminal case against him. Could secretly recorded videos be breaking the law? Remember, when you look at the, when you look at the language being used, um, the, I mean, it says that when he's been arrested following an inquiry into footage of men chatting up females in the street. What's, what's wrong with men chatting up females in the street? Why has this become... Why is this a crime? I wouldn't recommend it, Scotland, for game, unless someone really likes a particular type of female. So some women posing for the camera there, that they've blurred out, right? Okay, I mean, she looks like she, she's consensually posing for the camera. I don't see him forcing that in any way. We heard in, in your report that, that the covert recordings that Adnan uh, Ahmed had made didn't form part of the prosecution against him. Presumably this is actually one of those crimes that's quite difficult to prosecute, to bring to court, is it? Exactly. It's, um, it is a tricky one legally. We've, sp we've spoken to lawyers who do believe you would have a case uh, under the Communications Act in order to prosecute someone for obscene content that's posted online. However, it would be a, a rare thing to do that, so I could see maybe why the prosecution went down the behaving in an abusive and threatening manner like it did. And, and it's difficult for the police uh, to, to prosecute. With personal experience, I used to hang out with groups of women, and they can be just as predatory and very verbally abusive if a guy doesn't want anything to do with them. Gay men can just be just as predatory. I'd love to see this with, with a gay guy. I'd love to see a gay guy doing a pickup artist video exactly like this, in in show. And there's plenty of plenty of poofs in Glasgow. He does fucking pick. Um, it, it would be interesting to see what he would get called, because I bet he wouldn't get called a predator or a creep. Back in Glasgow, the trial of Adnan Ahmed is over. A jury has found him guilty of harassing women. This, once again, is a total lie. Ahmed faced no charges of harassment 
and was not convicted of harassment. He was wrongfully convicted of Section 38, Breach of Peace, by a jury heavily influenced by press coverage on a daily basis throughout his trial. Again, the only real harassment and sexism in this documentary is performed by the production team themselves. Without you, I mean, this in particular investigation probably wouldn't have happened, but how difficult are these crimes to prosecute? The, the, it's, it's, it's a, it depends from where, you know, where these pick up artists are operating, and it's different between English law and Scots law, but I would say it's quite a murky one legally in terms of prosecuting. Um, for example, what we've seen here in Scotland is a, a, a focus on the um, behaving in an abusive and threatening manner. So that's what Anand Ahmed was convicted on. If you were to move down south, potentially you'd maybe go on a, a communications order, so um, breaking the law in the Communications Act for the videos that are posted online. Mm -hmm. So it is quite murky. And in Scotland, things are going wrong in this area at a pretty rapid rate. Freedom of speech. There's two reasons why freedom of speech is a crucial issue. Number one, we want to avoid injustices. If this law goes through, people are going to face legal consequences for doing nothing more than expressing unorthodox opinions, or maybe expressing unorthodox opinions in clumsy ways. Okay, maybe people who might be less educated, or they might be quite wound up about something, they might say something in a way that other people might be able to pick a hole in it, or, or see that's not quite the right way to say it. And instead of explaining to them, they'll find themselves uh, with a knock on the door from the police. So we want to avoid injustices. And the second reason we're bothered about freedom of speech is we want to keep society on track. If challenging flawed ideas becomes impossible, then we can go further and further in dangerous directions. I think that's already happening. Now, the way that happens is partly someone who might speak out about something might be prosecuted by the police and therefore present, prevented from doing so but that's not the main effect the main effect is the chill it produces through society if someone gets arrested for something even if they're released without charge the vast majority of people who are thinking of saying the same thing will think i'll just leave it i won't bother it's not worth the hassle are youtube doing enough about this we heard they've taken a a, a few videos off today but broadly speaking should they be paying more attention to what's going on yeah, I think uh, this will be a bit of an eye-opener, the documentary that went out tonight. This is, you know, Street Attraction, Addy A Game, they are part of a, part of a huge business which operates online on YouTube. So I do think there might be some questions to be asked about whether or not that content can t continue to exist on there. Um, they've acted very promptly today um, and maybe we'll see them act with um, as potentially more um, channel deletions. YouTube has clear policies that outline what content is not acceptable to post and we remove videos violating these policies when flagged by our users, YouTube spokesperson. Well, it'll be perfectly safe then. YouTube also confirmed that they have stuck, uh, struck two of the videos identified by the BBC for violation of their policies around sex and nudity. Right, so the BBC have stuck him in then, right, they've grassed him up, right, so they've got two of his videos. Um, Addy A Game declined to meet for a face to face interview. Over 250 videos remain live on his DWLF Game YouTube channel. You see, what the BBC are doing here, right, this is scummy. The media do this all the time, by the way. What they're doing there is they're saying in a roundabout way, go and flag his channel. That's what they're saying, that they want to punish him now, you know. Um, and that's their way of saying, go and flag his channel. Let's get his channel taken down, you know, which is pretty shit, isn't it? Um, YouTube clarified that they have clear reporting tools and a dedicated privacy complaint process should someone object to their appearance in a video. Yes, that's true. That's, they do have that, yes. And I'm sure people... I'm sure people will be putting it to good use now. He needs shamed and his YouTube channel taken down and there it is. Don't worry. There you go, BBC. You've got your way. It's probably already down, by the way. Uh, the fact that the social even published this crap is disgusting. If anything, the BBC social should be shaming this man. I, I think they did, Kirsty. I think they did do that, sweetheart. This is happening in plain sight, as we said. You know, the, the videos are being uploaded for anyone to see on the internet. I mean, they're clearly confident they aren't doing anything wrong at all. Yeah, they, they are completely adamant that they are operating within the lines of the law. And at the point when I did ask them these questions, I didn't see any remorse. Um, they, they have 
they believe they're doing nothing wrong and that's that's their line so until something is done then they'll continue to behave that way uh, YouTube have to act and ban him why they've already removed the videos after the, the BBC grassed him up yeah I'm sure you'd all be outraged if he was white good looking and rich we see that that I don't know if skin colour's anything to do it, but the good looking and rich part, you know, would be a different story uh, if you had a fucking Lamborghini parked there, completely different story. Um, and also, by the way, imagine a woman made a video like that. And you know another thing? Imagine that he was gay and he was picking up guys. What do you think the reaction would be? Do you think they would hold the men to the same standard that they are now holding the adult women? Hmm. Somehow, I don't think they would. Somehow, I think they'd be going, well, if a guy wants to go and suck his dick, that's up to him. But when it's a woman, it's like, oh my god, she's a toddler. You can't treat her like that. She's just a toddler who's allowed to vote, drive, own her own business, pay taxes, have employees. Ah, but, but she's just a toddler. We have to treat her like a fucking toddler. I'm not a pimp in the way you would describe that word associated to criminal activity. I have the mindset of a pimp in the way where I think that I am the man who leads and I'm in charge. I do not put women above me. They're, they're, they're spying on guys, they're getting their channels taken down and they're getting them charged with crimes. And they're gonna, they're gonna get the white boys first, but more importantly, as I've always said, the ship rolls downhill. They are coming after the black date coaches. They are coming after you, you Mac guys, you guys who, 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 who teach the, the, the pimp game. You guys too, especially you guys, they hate you guys. They are coming after all of you very, very soon, just based on this article alone. No, whenever something like this happened, when it happened to Julian Blanc back in 2014, I think it was. It's, it's kind of all been waiting to rear its head for a long time, hasn't it, again? Yes. But... Everyone's going to have a different opinion on this, and that's okay. Just talk about it and, and uh, stand up for what you actually believe is right. If you are a person that goes out and meets women in unconventional environments, not in bars and clubs or on Tinder, then this is directly affects you, and you've got to get involved. Like, that is important. Yeah. Nice guy that has been brainwashed and socially conditioned by feminine society to cut off your balls and hate men that have balls sitting in your house, hating your life, hating your relationship. They think they know it all, too much knowledge and wanting to be right all the time. Wanting to put other people down so they feel better about themselves. They're normally very sarcastic. They normally diss other people. They try and make a name off of other people by dissing them. They don't have original content, but they would rather diss someone else and use someone else as an example of how they're not living right to show that they have more knowledge. Omegas and beaters are fucking toxic. They're poison. There, there are many of these um, so-called pickup artists operating in the UK and globally. And I think if you are a pickup artist or practicing any of the techniques that we've seen Adnan Ahmed be prosecuted and convicted on, I think that you would maybe think again about your actions when you go out into the streets and, and, and behave this way. Beta, male, white knight, nice guy, cucks. Because that shit is just manipulative. I have drama with guys like this. I don't respect the bullshit. That these guys come with. These are the type of guys that shame men for approaching women. They are angered by it. They are way too serious. They are so concerned about their looks, their money, their status, their cars, their penis size. They think these are 
all things to brag about and they give themselves so much inner turmoil with this bullshit. They hate and judge people because inside they hate and judge themselves. But of course they go out into the streets and behave this way because there must be a market for their services, mustn't there? I mean, is this the wider societal problem? De depressingly, there is a, a market for this and, you know, we're talking a multi-million pound industry globally. Um, men are paying hundreds of pounds for these courses, so there definitely is a societal issue there. And I think the more cases we have like this will help change that, because anyone who thinks that's the way you should operate as a human being, making others feel uncomfortable, clearly needs to kind of learn a lot about I suppose behaving in a respectful way. The real sexists are the beta male shamers. Guys with real game don't call women sluts. They understand, they're on the in. They understand women love sex just as much as men. That's a beta male shaming tactic and it's wrong. You choose who you want to talk to. You don't want to talk to the ones that are forced upon you, that are obnoxious, that are loud. You approach the ones that you want, the feminine ones the ones that are accepting of your leadership, the ones that want to meet men, the ones that are sexy, the ones that do their hair, wear the sexy outfits, that are dressed up, the ones that want to be approached, you choose the ones you want to approach. That's what these fucking beta male cucks don't understand. They leave comments on the pages, they're fucking triggered pussies. More dislikes than, than likes, so I'm guessing these comments are going to be fully, full of the the jowl movers, you know, the, the jowls will be going crazy in the comments. Oh, this is just disgraceful, right? Here we go, right? I've not read them, but here we go. He's picked the wrong side to do this, and only a matter of time before he gets a good shooing. Uh, well, this is what I mean. The women here, are, they're not exactly shy to tell you to fuck off if you annoy them. I mean, predator, horrendous behaviour. See, I, I, don't, I don't think he's, he counts as a predator. He's chatting women up. If he doesn't get anywhere, he moves on to another woman. I don't know, I don't know why you would call that a predator. Like it's a bad thing. He's chatting women up, so what? You know, as I say, the filming, the audio, that's crossing the line. Don't know if it's against the law, but that's crossing the line. Everything else is fine. The women can tell him to fuck off, that he's in the city centre, it's busy, there's plenty of people there. You know, it's not exactly, I don't know, it's, it's, it seems that, it seems that men talking to women is now becoming a, a crime. Because he's, he's a predator for talking to women. What? How the fuck does that work? I think it's fairly safe to say his card is well and truly marked. If I were him, I would leave Glasgow and go a long way away where no one knew me. Hope he sticks around for the severe doing that is surely in the post, however. Why why is it, Mike, right, that you presume that everybody in Glasgow is violent and they just, they just turn to violence because they see a video on YouTube, you know, with the dramatic music? Why do you think that? What's wrong with you? We're not like that here. Stop it. Stop giving us a bad name. What, are they violent in Glasgow? No, oh, they're not. Shut up. Actually, y you might have had a point in the 90s, you know, maybe 80s, 90s, definitely the 70s and 60s, but now it's full of fucking soy boys here, man. Fucking hell, walking about with their fucking coffees, you know what I mean? Fucking bunch of poofs, man. It's not as tough as it used to be, I'll tell you that much. This predator needs a Glasgow kiss. That's a, a, that's a headbutt. He says he doesn't believe in consent. I didn't. Where, where did they say that? Uh, did we watch? Did we watch the same video? I, I think we watched the same video. I don't think he said he doesn't believe in consent. Hmm. I wonder how many women he has raped. Did I miss something about what he said about consent? What did I miss? I watched the whole thing. The only time I seen consent mentioned was when he said that the audio clips were consensual. Um, but there we go, I had a feeling that's where the comments were going to be, you know, full of women pretending to be offended and full of men desperately trying to get women's approval. Oh, I'm not, I'm not like him, I'm one of the good guys. Not saying what he's doing is polite, but I hate to tell you that unless he has physically assaulted, exposed himself or constantly chased after and harassed someone, he hasn't done anything illegal. That's exactly what I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What has he done that's illegal? If he gets fined or jailed for simply hitting on women, then that will open the door for anyone to be fined or engaging in chat process, and where will that leave us? Uh, and he's right, I mean, this is, um, filming in public is perfectly legal. Imagine your daughter or sister going with that. Uh, he's like a 12-year-old man, man-boy in that tracksuit. But, the, but, is, is your daughter or sister 
an adult, is she able to choose? You know, and remember, you remember all that crap about women are just as capable as men? Well, let's hold them to that standard. Are they an adult? Do they choose to have sex with this guy? Because, you know, they don't have to, right? You know that, right? And all these people, all these fucking assholes in the comments in this video, these are the people that will help push these laws through. Because the, what, the, what the, the, the SNP, it will definitely be them. They'll come forward and say, we want to make it against the law for men to approach women in the street. And most sensible people will go, huh? But then the SNP will go, because of this guy here, look, this creepy predator guy. We don't want this. Think of your daughters. And then, and then these people will go, oh God, I, Jesus fucking Christ, I don't want that. And then it'll be a law that you can't talk to women anymore. And it's, you're, probably, you're probably watching this right now thinking that I'm exaggerating, you know what I mean? And you, you fucking know I'm not. You know it's not an exaggeration, you know it's coming. Um, but I, 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 don't know, I don't think that this guy's done anything to deserve to be arrested, you know. Apart from being Pakistani, but that's just me, that's, I would arrest him for that. I'm joking, I'm joking.